uh, do not forget to refresh this the browser so you can get the updated link. So at the bottom of the page, you can see the web page for the first project. So I think I'm going to keep updating this for the fourth semester this year. So I think if you guys can, can get the A-bit star block done, and it's very easy to connect the, the DAC and the OPAMP compiler to this and make it work. It's just one step away from the final result. But I, I'm not seeing you guys are getting it done. Um, if you get it done, so I think uh, for probably in the fourth semester, I will directly uh, provide uh, the schematic of this guy to the students so they can build everything, and make it work. So we're now going to build everything in this semester. So only the star block, but a bit. I have done the four bit example for you guys. Uh, so in the report, since we have two weeks, a little bit less than two weeks before the final exam. So I think we have about one week and a half uh, to wrap up this project. So first you need to build a three input NAND gate, which is being used for the TID free flop. So what you want to show in the report is um, this one and the simulation for the three NAND gate to verify the logic and build everything using I built the TID flip flop, use that uh, three input NAND gate and simulate it. So you need to know how to simulate it. Right? So if you if I give you this schematic and you don't know how to simulate it and verify the logic, and I won't give you that credit. Right. So you, you want to build it and run it. See if you can duplicate the input using a clocked input. Uh, you know, clock the source, right? Clock the circuit. <laughs> So here is the 4-bit star block. Because it's a 4-bit, so you need a 5 five states, which has to be implemented by 5 different flops. So two rows, and the first one, uh, the, the ones on the top, the schematic is different from the one that I drew in the, in the, in the class, because this one is set bar and reset bar, right? You have to give a 0. To, to set and reset. But if you go back to the lecture's notes, I'm feeding a one to it to set and reset it. So it can be a different story. You cannot directly use that schematic in here. That's a different flip-flop. So in that case, you have to use a Q bar to trigger that set. If you use Q, it's not going to work. You're, you're going to see all ones all the time. So now let's look at this schematic. <clears throat> How can we simulate it and just verify if this works or not? We need to know, or what you want to bear in your mind is, what is the uh, purpose of this circuit? So what's expected or desired output from this block? So let's come back here. <clears throat> See here, this is uh, the table I drew in the class. And these are all the comps, the output of the comparators, of the comparator. And that's, that's the desired final result. That's the output of the star block. Right? I just need this binary number. It's a four bit binary number. I just need it. Then I can feed it back to the comparator. You know, these are being fed back to the compiler. So this is actually done. This is a ready um, digital signal. And so here, these are the outputs, Q3, Q2, Q1, Q0. And that's the final result. I need it. I'm going to feed these binary numbers to the DAC and feed it back to the compiler. Right? So what I need from here is, because it's not giving me the final result at one step, it, need, it needs to run all these different steps. And at the very beginning, I need a 1000. That's what we need for that, um, for the second row. So at the very beginning, I need a 1000. That's the first state. If you are drawing the state diagram for the star ADC, right? So that's the first state. So let's get that state first. How can I get one, zero, zero, zero? 
and should be memorized, should stay there, not being changed until the until the next clock cycle, the rising edge. So I need a one zero 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 at the very beginning, always. So it's just set it. It's it's not relevant to the input. So just set it. Set and reset the, the other ones. Just set this guy. If you want to set this one, you need uh, this signal to be what? Zero or one. It's a set bar. Set underscore B. Set bar. You need a zero to set it. So you need a zero here to set it. Because this is Q bar, so when you need a zero, you need a one here. So you need a one for the Q. If you need a one for the Q, you need to set it. Right? How to set it? Zero again. So you need a zero here to set this guy. And also this, I name it as reset. Hopefully it's readable. So I named this guy as reset because it's being shorted to the reset bar, to the reset pin of all the following for the trailing flip flops. So whenever I'm setting, when I'm giving a zero to this one, the first one is setting this one, so give a one here, and at the same time it's resetting all the other ones. So it's actually giving a one and all zeros for the following ones, right? So I need a reset signal at the very beginning to create that sequence or combination of binary numbers. So let's see. If I give a if I give a zero here, then it's gonna be one, zero, zero, zero. Then because this is one, this will be zero, and this is zero, this will be one. So it's gonna be zero. One, one, one. Because this is zero, so it's going to set this Q. So you are getting one here, but all zeros for the, for the following ones. Right, at the very first step. So in that case, you are creating that first state by resetting everything. So before you run everything or you want to sample or convert anything, you need a reset signal to trigger that. So what's going to happen is, <clears throat> no matter what, you are going to need this at the very beginning and then release it. So this will provide the one zero 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 combination. And this will allow the D flip flops operate operate uh, in a normal, in a regular um, function. And then when you are done, you just pull it down and reset it again. So you are getting one zero 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 again. So it's ready for the next number. And then release it. So you can get whatever you can. Just follow, so it's going to follow the algorithm in the table, in the SAR algorithm in the table to convert all these numbers and keep comparing, comparing, and give you that final combination. And then you have to restart again and then release it. So this window is going to, win, going to be the window that converts or giving you that uh, combination of all the comps or the comp comparator's outputs. So this window will, during this time window, it's going to give you that combination. It has to be done within that window when it's being released. All right. So it's good to understand that first. <clears throat> and yeah, I think that's it. So the SAR block is pretty simple. And when you are doing the simulation in the report, um, it's required that you have to create a block out of this. It shouldn't directly simulate it in here. 
But when you are trying to demonstrate the functionality, you can do it, like whatever I have done here. Uh, but it's not the, the uh, good practice. So what you want to do is just create all the pins available. So if you are looking at this one, what are the inputs and outputs of, the, of this block? So inputs, clock, reset, V high, V low. And these are the inputs. Right? And for outputs, Q, Q, uh, no, outputs, just the Q3 to Q0. So that's a uh, chip, what the chip looks like. So com uh, also input has a comparator's uh, feed-in signal as well. So comparator clock reset, V high, V low. And these are the outputs. So the outputs should be connected to the DAC in the future. But now we don't have it. We just want to verify the logic. So you wrap up everything here into a block that's required in your report. You have to do this and run the simulation here in the new schematic. And name it as sim something. Right? Whatever you want to name this guy, you can name it as like sim underscore a bit D -f 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 or something, D -f -d -f -f. okay, and run the simulation. And there's uh, one thing probably you're getting all the raw files and log files is really annoying. So you can directly go to the control panel in operation. You can check this box. So after you close that schematic, when you're still running it, it's going to show all these files, temporary files. But when you close it, at the moment it closed, Yeah, at the moment, you close the window of the, of the schematic, it's going to automatically delete all these temporary files for you. So check this box will make the uh, folder looks cleaner. <clears throat> and the report should be submitted to uh, this email address okay, by 5 p.m. on the due date, which is, I think, Friday, the so Friday next week. Yeah, similar. So I have figures, I have captions, material, introduction, all these kind of things. Do you want to do it on the website? Because it's not a lab. So it looks weird to be in the lab's web, but I think that's fine. You want to do it on, on the web, on the website, probably? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it on the website. I'm going to modify this real quick so I don't have to check all the emails. Okay? Just create a link on the website with all the labs. So now let's look at the simulation results, see if this is working or not. <clears throat> so I just simulated this guy. And one thing for uh, Safi there. So here's the schematic I sent to her email uh, yesterday, I guess. So I, I connected this pin to here, which, which was wrong. You should just change it to here. I short it here to here in, in, in the one I sent, sent to you, just to let you know. And so you need a reset signal. So the reset signal is re not just resetting here these ones but also resetting these ones as well the reason is you do need a initial state for this one so just get it just make it ready just get it ready right just reset everything just in case there are some pre-stored charges you know something you don't know just reset it so it's ready to ready to run so after you release all the reset pin it's ready to accept any signal being fed into uh, these tissue flops. So the reset signal is being shorted to all these reset pins except for this one. And you don't want to reset this guy at all because that's the first uh, stage. And you need a one as a first state. So that's why I just release it. You can permanently short this one to VDD. The reason I have a VDD here is because I'm directly simulating this schematic in here. So I can connect this to VDD. So when you have a voltage high, it's releasing that reset pin. It's not resetting anything, right? So in the block, when you are trying to make a block, you want to leave it as V high. 
right? Because all the pins are, it's just a floating pin. Um, so the user is going to connect this one to one volt, not you, the designer, right? Just leave the pin open. It's just being shorted to V high. You have all the V highs because they are the same node. So electrically, they are shorted together in the chip. It's just not showing you, but they are shorted together. It's the same thing as the PCB design schematic. So that's all the seven resets. So you know, whenever I'm at the very beginning, you need to reset it, right? So reset everything. So you're expecting one, zero, zero, zero. Right? See all the cues? You're expecting one, zero, zero, zero. That's the first state. When you're drawing the SARS state diagram, the first state is one, zero, zero, zero. And after this is being released, the D flip flops can actually work. It has to wait until the next rising edge, right? Which is here. So that's the first rising edge after the reset pin is being released. So the first rising edge is going to do what? Why do we need a rising edge? It's doing what? What this one is doing? What this clock is doing? What's the initial value? Hmm. No. So this is already the one zero zero zero. It's right there. It's a Q. It's ready. Because whenever you are resetting everything, that one zero zero is ready. So that's the very beginning. That's the very first state. Because you need that state all the time. So why not just make it like that? Just make it work. Whenever you are resetting it, you got one zero zero zero, and it's ready for the for the conversion. It's ready for the next state. So depending on the comp, you know, because we don't know. What's a, what's a, uh, since we don't have a comparator here, so we have to fake it. So this, that's a comp, comparator's output I just faked, right? Doesn't matter what it is, but you just want to have some variations. If you have a constant one, then you are getting all ones. You don't even know if your circuit is being set or is actually sampling. So you, wanna, you don't want to make the, the comparator's, the, the fake signal to be, the period to be uh, too long or too short. So I think this is fine. So this frequency is okay. Because you can see that at first the rising edge is sampling this comparator's output, which is zero. It samples. So whenever I was asking what, what the rising edge does, you just want to say it is sampling that input. It samples that input. So samples this comp, which is comparator's output. But we don't have a comparator. That's just a fake signal. Boom. Sample, just samples what? Samples a zero, right? It samples a zero. Because a comp is being shorted to data, so whenever the clock is coming, it samples that zero. And then what? That zero will be sent to where? Uh, So the comp, A3 is zero. So zero will be inserted in here. And all the other numbers will be shifted to the right by one bit. Let's see if that's true. A3 is zero. A3 becomes zero. And this one is being shifted to the right or being shifted down here. And all the zeros are not being changed. They are not changed, right? And then, Boom, the next rising edge is going to sample one here. Because at this moment, the comparator's output is one. So it samples a one. So A2 is one. So A2 will be, will be inserting here. So you are getting zero, one, one, zero. Zero, one, one, zero. Let's see. Zero, one. Oh, here. Zero, one, one, zero. And the next rising edge, which is the third one, samples a zero. So which is a, a1, right? It's going to be a1 here. 
zero one zero zero one zero one zero one zero one remember zero one zero one okay see zero one zero one and the very last rising edge is gonna sample one so it's gonna be zero one zero one still as a final state so that's a final state zero one zero one zero one zero one <coughs> which is correct so it's verified it's not being changed anymore it's, it's gonna hold this final state over there and make it ready for the um, DAC to convert into the comparator and it's not changing anymore because this is the final final result right if you so for the SAR ADC's uh, state diagram if you keep doing it are you able to change anything I don't think so right mm -hmm. it's gonna keep that state it only has four beats and you are done with the four beats how can I change anything so all the beats will be shifted to the right and there's nothing on the right that's why it's not changing anymore it's going to hold that 0101 state which is a ADC right so that's a final digital result you're going to use and so it's ready for the next number I mean if you have a one analog point from the input and you're done that's a four bit adc you're done that's the final digital result convert it from that analog point uh, because the analog signal has so many points to form that continuous signal this is just one point right it's, it's done it's not really slow and so what you can do is you can just drag after this you have to look at diagram when doing the simulation or doing the design you have to look at the diagram so now if I'm using this type of frequency of the clock and I have a comparator's signal as this and I can get it done within this time frame so I can just pull it down after this just pull it down to zero so I'm ready for the next number I pull it down very shortly so I can reset everything so the output will be reset to one zero zero one zero 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 and so I'm ready for the next cycle. So it's going to be ready to convert another analog number. Because you can see the window here. For example, I pull it down at this point. Can I pull it down at this point? No. You need a four clock for rising edges to get it done. It's a four bit. If it's a eight bit ADC, in your case, you probably need a, you, you definitely need eight rising edges and then pull it down. So if, if I pull it, pull the reset pin down to ground here, so the time from here to here will be the window that converts one analog number. Right? So it's done. So I have simulation here. Um, so you can see that if I'm, you know, use a cursor in the clock signal, Here's a reset signal, so I'm I'm uh, resetting and then release it and reset and release. So see if I'm able to do that job. So just look at the clock when moving the curse cursor. Um, when moving the cursor, look at the comp and the cues. All right. So now let's do it. After the reset, it start working. And now look at the clock. I don't have a rising edge yet. So the rising edge happens out here. So it's going to sample zero. So it's going to be zero, one. Look at comp, okay? Zero, one. So I'm supposed to get zero, one, zero, one. So now, now let's look at cues. It is zero, one, zero, one. Right? And then. It's gonna hold hold that state until here. So look at reset. Look at reset. Is that one zero zero zero? Here, one zero zero zero. 
So after I reset it, I'm getting to the first initial state again. So it's ready for the next number. So I don't have to, you know, <laughs> make this reset super long. I think I should make it shorter so I can start converting the next analog number really quickly. It's just waits for so long. So you are getting a, uh, not getting a, the best resolution. And now until here, look at reset. So it's ready for another conversion. And but we don't have a resin edge yet, do we? So I have to wait until here, right? So it's gonna sample this comp, which is one. One, zero, one, zero. Now let's verify it. One, zero, one, zero. After it, right? Is that one, zero, one, zero? Yeah, so you're done with the next analog number. So that's how these digital uh, analog numbers are being converted into digital numbers. Then for the next cycle, it's gonna do the same job. So if you're looking at the diagram of the star, <coughs> Four bit, for example. <clears throat> it's not required, but if you are interested in that, please do it. So, if you have an op amp and analog signal, you you need a definitely need a sample and hold. But if we are not adding this sample and hold to the circuit at the very beginning, we are testing, we are doing the design. You want to take baby steps, right? If you want to add too many variables to the, to the system. So what I'm going to do is I will just uh, give a DC voltage, like this is one volt uh, as a reference, right? It's a one volt as a reference. So I'm going to give like 0 0.52 or something and see if I'm just a DC, right? Just give a DC signal here. Just use a voltage, voltage source give a DC signal, so I don't need this sample and hold circuit. It just add a DC signal here and see if it can convert convert it to the desired uh, digital signal. So compare is already given, it's on this, on this website, you can directly just use it, right? you don't have to design anything. And DAC is R to R, which is not ideal DAC because it has all the resistor strings, it takes a it takes a lot of space on the chip and also is more power consuming. Uh, so people have been using the charge uh, scaling the ACs. Which will not cover the details, but it's super simple. Let's look at the website. I'm ready. I provided the link there. So the, um, you can look at the slides. It has uh, introduced the, the principle of that charge scaling DAC. And also a lecture has all the notes and slides in there. It's just everywhere. You just search for charge scaling DACs. But you can also use R2R. R. It doesn't matter. It's just not really practical. We can change it later. The DAC is just DACs. It's super simple. Um, so think about that. If you are doing a, you are making this SAR ADC, not just this, right? So during that, here's reset. So this will give you, give the SAR a one zero 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 output, but during this window, it's going to do the conversion at all the rising edges, right? And so the conversion will be done during this window. So after that, the so so during during uh, that conversion at every rising edge, what's actually happening here for the feedback loop? Think about it. If the comparator's output is kind of is, com uh, is relatively slower than this.
Is the SAR going to sample anything as this line except for the rising edge? No. That's why we want to use a clocked circuit. It always wait until the rising edge. So make it predictable. It's not always changing. It only happens at the rising edge. So whenever the rising edge comes in, now let's see what's happening actually. The rising edge comes in, and the star will work, right? And it's going to update that table, the algorithm table. Remember the table with all the A's? And give you updated uh, um, digital number, which is not necessary to be the final result, because the final result only happens at the final rising edge. So during this time frame, for example, the first rising edge, it's going to update this number. And do you have is a DAC controlled by a clock? Probably not. So the number will be directly converted and fed back to the comparator. And the comparator is also not controlled by the clock. But there will be time delay. There are so many, one, two, two blocks. So there will be some kind of time delay. Right? So it's going to be delayed a little bit, but which is fine, doesn't matter. But the signal will not be controlled by any other clocks. So it's going to, after this rising edge, it's going to update this digital line. And then the number, the, the, all the results will be um, converted by the DAC and there will be analog signal being provided to this pin. And because this is not, also not controlled by a clock, so the comparator's output will be updated before the next rising edge. Right? So that's called a, um, that, that's very critical because um, the time delay here shouldn't be longer than the period here. Because when the rising edge is coming, you want a, this number to be ready. All right? So that's why you cannot run uh, the ADC at any speed. You have to consider the time delay in, in here. So the comparator, the next comparator's value, value is ready, and then the rising edge comes in, and then it's going to convert it, and then uh, you get another comparator output ready for the next rising edge. So this project is, is actually pretty simple. Uh, after you are done with this one, and you understand what's going on, you know how to simulate it, you just connect the DAC, and so all these two ones are you have learned this in the semester, and just add this one here, see if you can get something, right? That's not required. I mean, I understand we only have one week and a half left. One half week uh, left, so. But that's not difficult, right? How many nodes, like, near the cabinet, do you grab the way to the floor? Like, if you want it somewhere? I think I think counter works. So whenever it reaches that counting number, you just uh, so I think these pins can be connected to uh, four D flip flop as well, right? So whenever that counter's value is um, is reached, then it's gonna give a clock to it and then pump it out to the next stage. Wait, it's ADC, right? ADC one of this D signal, the digital signal. Um, so when you're doing simulation, you don't have to worry about that. It's just, you, just, you can plot all the signals and just move the cursor to that state. You can see if that's, that, uh, you can visual, visualize it to, to check, check if that is a correct signal. And also since we are simulating this one just using uh, DC, so after all the conversions, it's going to be st stabilized as that specific combination. So it's not changing anymore. All right? It just give a DC and run it and check, and run another, give another DC and run and check, see if that works. Right? Just for now. But for the sample and hold, you probably need a a lot more things to be added to there, like timing logic and. Uh, different clocks, different uh, frequencies of clocks. But after this is verified, then we can move to the sample and hold. A sample and hold circuit has been given, it's provided. 
right? Just um, just need to redesign the all the timing logic to guarantee all the things can be converted in a certain time frame, right? Is that doable? Only star, not anything else. So whatever I have done here on the website is a four bit version. I just need to run it in an eight bit version and get a report out of it. I think it's reasonable in one week. So you can get a credit. Any other questions? No? Okay, let's move forward to the memory circuits. Have you learned anything this semester in this class? Yeah. Something? Is that useful, you think? Yeah. I think the pace is slow. <laughs> what you think? Yeah. A little bit. All right. Asram. Bit, bit underscore B means bit bar. A Q and Q bar. And there's no connection between these two wires. <clears throat> so this is called a bit line. That's the data being read and being written as well. So here's a data point. That's called Q. Here's Q underscore bar, Q bar. <clears throat> And that's a word line or the row selector. So when there are so many rows, it's repeating all these. This is one cell, that's one SRAM cell. And there will be many more in the column. So that's the word line. If this line is activated, it's going to open up these two NMOSIS and pick up this line and read that data to this bit line. The bit line is the data to be read. <clears throat> so now let's see how this, how the reading operation is, uh, is done by this memory cell. So that's a latch. And there's no difference between this and this. Same circuit. There's no difference. The same. And for the read operation, What's the first step? 
free charge. The bit and bit bar lines to VDD <coughs> and then float. So which means it just precharges these two lines to VDD and then float it. So it's not a constant, uh, it's been not, not being shorted to a constant uh, voltage source. It just charges to VDD and then release it, disconnect from the VDD. So it's going to hold that VDD charge over here. I'm going to tell you why later, pretty soon. <clears throat> so for example, initially, read uh, one from Q. So which means Q has a one here and this will be zero, right? If this is one, this must be zero. Why? Because of the latch. Remember I explained this last time on Monday's lecture. It's a, a positive feedback and inverter has a curve like this. So whenever this one is lower than 2.5, is this lower than two, like 2.45, and it's going to pull this to 2.65, for example, and it's just going further. It's going to keep going. So the uh, these two pins will be either 0, 05 or 50, right, like this. So for example, this pin, this Q here, has stored a 1 from the previous state. So this must be zero because of the uh, positive feedback of this latch. Same schematic. So this is one, this must be zero. And now I'm, I'm trying to read that data in the memory and read it to the bit line. So this will be uh, connected to something else, for example. This, so I'm just trying to read that one previous stored, previously stored in here. So, um, since these two has been precharged to VD, so what's going to happen to these lines? Precharged to VD, but they are not constantly shorted to VD. So there will be some charges stored, being stored over there, but if you discharge it, it's gone. It's not constantly pro providing all these uh, charges from the source. <clears throat> so what's going to happen? Look at here first. Is this a strong zero or floating zero? Strong zero because it's shorting to the ground. Is this a strong VDD or floating VDD? Floating VDD. Can this strong zero discharge all the VDD charges? Yes, so it's going to be discharged. Right? So it's not, not going to affect anything. It just has some charges and boom, discharged. Done. Zero, zero. So what about this one? VDD, VDD. Mm -hmm. Nothing. Yeah. So I'm still re reading VDD. So this floating VDD is still VDD. It's not being affected. So what you're reading here? Reading a one here. Seems like after I activate this line, use a word line. So the word line can be created by a decoder. I can have a decoder to select each row at one time. So for example, this, this cell is being selected and these tools are opened up and seems like except for discharging this little poor VDD is not doing anything else. And then it's just read that bit. So I can read a one. And that was one, so I'm reading a one, which is Great. So what if this is zero, this is one? Yeah. What about this, this part? Stable, right? Nothing happening here. What about here? That's a floating VDD, that's a strong zero. It's going to be discharged. 
to zero, right? So <clears throat> this one will be discharged and become a zero. So then at another clock cycle, you are reading this line, you're getting a zero. It's done with a reading operation, right? So we must have a question. Why do we want to pre-charge it to VDD? We know it works, but why, when the designers initially designed the circuit, why do they want to pre-charge bit and bit bar to VDD? So NMOS is good at passing zeros, but not ones, right? And I'm reading the bit line always. This is nothing but just uh, trying to give a positive feedback. This is not data. This is data, right? So when I'm re reading a zero, when I'm reading a zero here, like the case, the second case we analyzed, is there any problem with reading a zero if I charge this to VDD? No, that's a strong zero and the NMOS is very good at passing zeros. It's gonna pass all the zeros to here. The strong ground, it's gonna just pull it to the ground. So what if, what about the first case? What the first case? It's a one. However, I'm reading the data here. It's not very good at passing a one to this pin. If I'm floating this guy to zero, then it has to be charged up by this one. So can I charge this pin up to one? To what? One minus VTH, right? So never reach one because it's the most pass gate. So that's why we pre-charge it to VDD. If you do not pre-charge it to VDD, pre-charge it to anything lower than VDD, it will never reach VDD. Right? Because this one will be degraded to one minus VTH. That's why we need a VDD to be precharged to the two lines. Make sense? Um, let's see, anything else I need to cover here? So how to precharge it to VDD? What, why, and how? <laughs> what is this? This is the SRAM. Why? Because it's not able to pass the entire one. And how? How can we precharge it to VDD? And we need to precharge it to VDD and then float it. The circuit uh, looks like this.
apparently this is VDD. <coughs> That making sense? So for phi two, phi one is a word line. It's a row selector. So that's called pre-charge. And you want to read it here, complete the read operation during this window. Isn't that right? <clears throat> because it has a bar on the file tool, this face, the signal. So whenever this is phi's, um, wait, this has to be zero. So when phi two is zero, it, uh, opens up these two PMOSes, so the charge will flow into the bit line from VDD, and then you pull it up to VDD so it can close these two or shut down these two uh, PMOSes, so these two lines will be floating. Okay? And then read. You have to read it whenever they are floating. All right, see you on Friday.